Today I have a Whirlpool washing machine with a new style control top that I want to show you how to find error codes, run tests on to help troubleshoot and fix your machine. This video will also work for Maytag washing machines that have a similar control top such as the Maytag Pet Pro washing machine. But before we begin you may want to find the secret tech manual just in case the codes or the operations have changed. To find your secret tech sheet get behind the washing machine and remove the one screw holding the wire cover in place, remove that cover, then remove the five screws holding the console plate in place. You can use either a T20 Torx bit or a quarter inch screwdriver to remove these screws. Like always, I will have a link to these kinds of tools in the description as well as a product tag if you need to buy anything to fix or diagnose your washing machine. With the plate off, you should be able to find your manual right about here. As a note, it does reference other technician sheets, but they're only available from the Whirlpool factory servicers as far as I can tell. But I'll include a little bit of that information too, just in case. At any rate, let's put this machine into diagnostic mode. Make sure no lights are displayed and it is on standby mode. If you aren't sure about that, just unplug the washing machine, wait one minute, then plug it back in. From here, we need to press these three buttons in order three times. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, within eight seconds to activate the mode. If you do this correctly, all the lights will flash to congratulate you for entering the code right. According to Whirlpool, if you try the code and the washer fails to go into diagnostics, there could be a major issue. I would press the power button on and try to select a mode. If it doesn't turn on and allow you to select a mode at this point, chances are the board shot. Otherwise, retry to enter the diagnostic mode one or two more times by unplugging the machine and putting it back in. And if it still doesn't work, it could very well be the board. As a note on the board that we saw earlier behind the console, there is a hidden LED light that should be flashing that is green to show that the unit has power. If it's not flashing, either the washer is not getting power or the board itself is bad. As a note, each key on the unit is assigned a number and your tech sheet may reference this for the console. When you enter the diagnostic mode, it's possible that there could be a major problem on the washing machine before you do anything else. The unit will begin to display any active error codes first. So if your unit begins to start flashing random codes, go to the error code information that's later on in this video. But assuming there aren't any blinking lights once you get into the mode, the first mode I want to show you to enter is the UI test mode. This is useful if you have any problems with the unit failing to run cycles to show if potentially a key could just be bad. To enter the UI mode, press key number one, which is the temperature key. All the lights will flash, showing you've entered the mode. From here, you need to turn the dial to scroll through 12 different light combinations. Each different light combination will cycle, and once you've done this, then all the UI buttons will unlock, allowing you to press them to run various lights on the console to test and show that they work. When you are satisfied with this mode, press and hold key number one for five seconds. When it exits out of this mode, you'll need to re-enter the diagnostic mode to do any more tests. Now that we're back into the diagnostic mode, let's go ahead and try the automatic test mode. This is a system that lets you test all the various parts on the washing machine to see if they can work properly. To enter this mode in diagnostics, Press button number two, then five, or in other words, the rinse and start buttons. If the unit has water going to it, it should immediately start filling with water and then running all the tests. While it runs these tests in the background, this is the sequence of events that the automatic mode should run in the exact order. Please read this chart to understand what's going to happen and what is happening while this video goes on. You can visually look and listen and then also test electrically with a multimeter, all these different things while the machine runs, and this is a powerful thing to use to test, but you do need a multimeter to run those electric tests. And if you need to do that, make sure to check the description for a Klein multimeter that I use to test a lot of the washing machines at my shop. Here's the amount of time that each test should take to do. Sadly, there's no manual parts test on this style machine, so you can't keep it running on one step infinitely, it seems. When in automatic test mode, you can use the temperature and rinse buttons key number one and two, to advance or retry the various tests. This allows you to go over a test multiple times to confirm that the part is working or not and should be very helpful. When all the tests finish, 
The lights should all flash and the unit will return to the diagnostic mode. Now if you need to exit the automatic mode quickly, press the power button and it will work to end all tests as fast as possible, returning the unit to the standby mode outside of diagnostics, and again you have to re-enter diagnostics to do any further testing. Back in the diagnostics mode, pressing and holding key number two will let you check the software version. This may matter if you installed a new control board or UI and you had issues, but otherwise I'm skipping this mode as I've never seen it need to be used. Now let's go to the error code system and explain how it works. To enter the error code system, press key number three. Once you've pressed key number three, the four lights at the top of the washing machine will begin to flash, showing you if there's any error codes on the machine. Now, the machine I have right here does not have any error codes, but let's show you a video from another technician showing an error code on the machine. The problem with the error codes on these style machines is you have to decipher what they mean. And if you have the tech sheet was included with this washer, it says that it's a binary code, but it doesn't even bother to explain what that is. So allow me to explain. All Whirlpool error codes have an F code and an E code. Putting the letters and numbers together tell you what the problem is, and that tech sheet will show you what all the F and E codes are. Here's how to understand it. If the lid lock light is lit up, it means that anything on this set of LEDs is the F code in a binary number format. When the lid lock light is not lit up, and there are LEDs here at the top of the console, then it means that it is the E code. Here's the cheat sheet to understand what the binary numbers are for all the codes. And again, let's go back to the error code on a broken machine and try to decipher it together. When the lid lock light is on, we see the soak, wash, and done lights are on. This corresponds to the binary number for seven. And the lock light is on, so that means it's the F code, so it's F7. When the lid lock light is off, only the soak light is on. The cheat sheet shows that it is the number four in binary code. So that's F7 and E4. Now the code deciphered with the F and E code, let's scroll through the extensive list of Whirlpool error codes and go through them. Do you see the error code that was on this unit? Guess what's wrong? That's right, the shift actuators have any problem not re-engaging the tub. Let's go ahead and continue with the rest of the codes that are on this sheet. Now back at the machine with this code, it can store multiple error codes. To cycle through each of the codes, press the third key to cycle through everything. It can store about five codes, and as you keep pressing the number three, it should cycle through all of them. If you want to wipe the system of any stored codes, press and hold key number three for five seconds. All the LEDs should flash, letting you know that the codes have been wiped away. From here, press the power button to exit the system and return it to the standby mode. The last thing I want to show you in this video is the factory calibration cycle, otherwise known by some terms as the factory reset. This is a powerful mode that can recalibrate the machine if it's having problems not spinning or running properly and is off balance. It is absolutely needed to run this mode if you've installed any new parts on the machine. To do this, make sure that the unit has no water or clothes in the machine. To remove any water that could be under the tub, just run the automatic test that we did earlier it will run the water, but then it will run the drain pump extensively to purge all the water. Make sure the unit is in standby, so again, no lights are on the display. So here's how to enter the diagnostic sequence. You have to do this first part in about 8 seconds or less. 
press key number one, then key number two twice. One, two, one, two. Once you've done this, the lid should lock and all the lights will come on. Once the lights come on, rotate the dial clockwise once. I did this a few times and sometimes the sense light would change off and on, but in this instance it did not. Once I've rotated the dial, I press the keys in this sequence, one, two, three, four, five, and six. If you are entering this code right, the lights are going to start turning off as you press the buttons in order. At this point, you may hear the washing machine make some noises and then the whole LED panel is going to blink a few times. The lid lock will flash and unlock, but this whole process took about 10 seconds to do, maybe a little bit more, so I had to be patient. The last step, once the door has unlocked, is to open the lid and then close it. Almost as soon as you close the washer lid, it should relock the lid one final time and the lights will start running and blinking in order. Congratulations, the reset is now starting and it's going to run for quite some time. You'll hear the shifter run, the water will start, and then the entire calibration sequence is going to begin. This entire process takes about four minutes from what I saw on my camera. Once everything is complete, the lights will flash off and now you are totally done with recalibration. These are all the things I wanted to show you in this video for Whirlpool or Maytag washing machines with this control top. I hope this helps you out. If you need any further help, I may be putting out a YouTube membership for info that is less common than what I can show in the videos. So if you have any questions, make sure to look for that when you need advanced help for your washing machine. Have a great day.